Welcome to our mountain homestead. I'm Shayla and we have all kinds of homestead projects for you in this video. I'm going to be making soap, lotion, salve. I'm going to be doing a little organizing and homeschool prep. I'm also going to be processing some excess potatoes. So kick back and enjoy the show. In this scene, I'm straining some calendula oil. We grew and harvested our own calendula over the summer and I dried it. I dried, I don't know how many pounds of calendula. I've had about a half a gallon of it infusing in olive oil for about a month now. And I am straining it and I'm going to make a salve with it today. So calendula is a wonderful skin herb and salve is great for the skin. It's great for protecting the skin and holding in moisture. I ended up with five cups and so I am going to mix it with 16 ounces of shea butter. I especially love shea butter for moisturizing. I've also got four ounces of cocoa butter that I am going to mix this with. There's two ways you can go about this. You can heat your oil and your shea butter and your cocoa butter and beeswax separately, or you can mix it all together like I'm doing here. I am simply taking the oil and the shea butter and the cocoa butter, and I'm going to set it up here in this very warm spot above my wood cook stove. And I've got time on my side. I'm not in a really big hurry. Now, if I was in a bigger hurry, I would have heated these up separately, but I wanted to see if they would melt here in this warm spot together. As the day started to come to a close, I could see they weren't going to melt. So I went ahead and put them in this very gentle water bath setup. You want to take great care not to heat your oils and your shea butter and your cocoa butter up too quickly. And you don't want to overheat it because it can burn. And now it's time to get the beeswax ready. This is about three ounces and eight grams of beeswax. It's not going to make a very dense salve. This is gonna be a super light salve. I need to warm it up though. I'm gonna melt the beeswax in this little cast iron skillet that I have. Isn't this little cast iron skillet just so cute? It's very tiny. <laughs> beeswax can burn really quickly, so you gotta keep a very close eye on it. Meanwhile, behind me, my husband is installing tile. I talked about how we couldn't afford to do tile in our downstairs kitchen, but upstairs is another matter. It's a space we have been planning and saving up for for quite some time to put tile. I'm so excited it's finally going up. So my beeswax is melted over here, and my oil and shea butter and cocoa butter is all melted so it's almost time to mix these together and I'm getting excited I like to make salve so much I acquired my master's in herbology in 1997 and herbology has always been a passion that's near and dear to my heart what I'm doing here is I'm very carefully, very slowly adding the beeswax to my oil and shea butter, cocoa butter mixture. You want the temperature of the two things to be pretty close because you don't want the beeswax to solidify once it hits the oil. I would like to go into more detail on the benefits of all of these wonderful ingredients that I'm using, but I have to be very careful what I say because of course, censorship. And I don't want my channel to be taken down. But what I can tell you is Hey, Google the benefits of all of these things. Calendula, beeswax, shea butter, cocoa butter. God has given us some truly wonderful substances in nature to use. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to bottle all of my salve. I'm just going to be using jars, simple little canning jars, jelly jars. They're perfect for salve. As these start to cool off a little bit, you don't want to put it in when they're still really hot, but as they start to cool, you can add some essential oils. So I added myrrh essential oil to mine. Myrrh is an amazing herb and one I like to have on hand pretty much all the time. You want to wait for these to cool completely and then you can cap them and put them in storage. I like to keep mine in a cool place. Stick around. Don't go anywhere because in a few minutes, I'm going to show you how to make lotion with this salve base.
We got time on our side We're in a state of hope I need you on my fire I want you to know That every time you're away I long for you so much I can find my way going on two years since we moved in to this dream home of ours on this mountain homestead. Every time I think I've got an area organized to where it will work, a little bit of time of using the space goes by and I realize Mm, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> you guys, it takes me so long of being in a new space, I feel like, to figure out how to properly organize it in a way that is really gonna work long term. Also, I think that having a home that is still got so much work that needs to be done and under construction definitely slows the process of getting settled in down significantly. <laughs> I feel like it takes me about five years to get settled into a new home, but when it's under construction, I don't know how long it's gonna take. <laughs> so in this space, I previously had the white hutch and I liked it there looks wise, but as time went on, I realized practicality wise, it's not working at all. I think the biggest problem we kept running into is the bottom cabinet. We could never get into it because closed baskets were always blocking the way. Also, the hutch extended out further into the room, which made closed baskets always in the middle of the room, it seemed like. I've been kicking around the idea for quite some time to move the hutch to the dining room, but I didn't really want to do that because it doesn't really go with the style that I was going for. The hutch is definitely more country farmhouse style, I feel like, and my vibe out in the main area was more boho or industrial, but I decided mm, let's just give this a try and see if we like it. And you know what, guys? I actually like it out here in this space. I like it better. It is far more useful. It makes the place look much more put together, especially with the white cabinets. And the shelf that was out here works better in the laundry room. It's amazing how much more functionality was bought just by swapping out these two furniture pieces. The laundry room has been staying far more tidy and the floor space stays much more clear. If you've been following us a while, you may remember our last year's harvest of potatoes. It was immense. Lately, some of the red Pontiacs have been getting away from us as far as the little eye buds go. So you got to take those little eye buds off of them as they start to sprout because if you don't, they'll take all of the moisture from the potato. Anyways, some of the red Pontiacs started getting away from us and we need to do something with them quickly. We have a lot of potatoes that we need to find a way to process. So we decided, hey, let's make hash browns. So we've been working lately to process and freeze hash browns. It's gonna be great for fast, easy breakfasts. To make these, we simply took the potatoes, washed them, grated them, and dunked them, soaked them in really cold ice water for a few minutes. Then we squeezed out the excess moisture, plopped them on a towel, as you can see here, so they could dry out a little bit more. And now I'm putting them on to cookie sheets. This is wax paper lined cookie sheets because I definitely do not want these to freeze and stick to the pan. It'll be really hard to get out if they do. And I'm freezing them in thin layers. And then once they have frozen after about maybe an hour, hour and a half, I just simply pull them out of the freezer, put them in vacuum pack bags and take the air out and then they're good to go. We were made for each other. I told you guys that I would show you how to make lotion with that sap base. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure out about half a cup of aloe vera juice and I'm going to warm it up. I want it to be fairly hot, but definitely not boiling. And as you can see here, I have a jar of salve. This is about eight ounces of salve and I have warmed it up as well. 
it is completely, almost completely melted. You want both of these things to be hot or this process won't work. We wanna emulsify these together. So I've got my hot aloe vera in this container and I've added my hot salve. As you can see, they've separated, but we're going to mix these together and they're going to emulsify and as they cool, they will emulsify together. Salve is wonderful for putting a barrier over the skin and protecting the skin and holding moisture in. But salve in itself is usually not very moisturizing and this is where the aloe vera comes in. If you add moisture to your salve and emulsify it together like this, you can create a lotion which is more moisturizing than a salve would be, far more moisturizing. You wanna keep mixing it off and on while it's cooling. You don't want to let it separate and it will separate if you stop mixing it for very long. So once it has cooled significantly to where it's still pourable to put in the jar, but definitely lukewarm, cool enough to touch, that's about when you can stop mixing it and expect it to stay together. Now, if it does happen to separate, you can always just reheat it and beat it with your mixer again and just mix it longer. So this lotion is almost completely cool, but obviously it's still slightly warm enough for me to pour back into the jar. Something I didn't show, but I did add is I did add some more essential oils to this as I was making it. One of the advantages to making your own homemade lotions is you can skip all of the toxic ingredients that you find in most lotions on generic store shelves. I wish you guys could sample this. This lotion is so wonderfully luxurious, friends. Next up, we're gonna make soap. This is gonna sound wild to you guys, but check this out. This is grease I've been saving for the last few months. I added some water to it just now so I could get it out of this container and pour it into this pan. Did you know you can make soap with this? It's true. So what I do is I take that grease and I go through a process of boiling it, chilling it until it's solidified, straining off the water, adding more water, repeating the process till it looks like this, until it's nice and white. Eventually it does turn white just like this if you do the boiling process and straining process enough times. So now I have this solid mass of fat and it's not technically what we call rendered but it's kind of a rendering process. Anyways what I've done is I've cleaned it with that water process and now I'm gonna make soap with it. This is my second year making soap this way. I made some last year about this time and it turned out wonderfully. I like to make it in the winter when I've got the stove going to boil the fat and when it's really cold outside so that I don't have to use refrigerator space. I can just take that pot of grease and set it outside to chill and solidify so that I can separate the dirty water from the fat. I've got my recipe here and what I've done is I've gone to brambleberry.com and I've used their soap calculator. There's a lot of different soap calculators you can use online though. You need a soap calculator so that you can calculate how much fat and how much liquid and how much lye that you need to use for your soap. I'll link to the lye calculator that I like to use below. I will also link to a couple of my favorite soap making videos for your convenience. I am making a calendula soap. To do this, I am simply making a calendula tea for the liquid portion of the soap. I'm going to add some ice cubes to cool this off, but also I saw the tip on one of the videos that I'll share below to add ice cubes to the soap as you put the lye in as well because that helps it to cool a little bit more quickly since the lye heats the liquid up so much. My recipe goes for 19 ounces and about four grams of liquid. So I'm adding the ice cubes just until I reach that point. I am doing the lye process outside. I never do this inside because of how dangerous lye is. So I like to do this whole process outside for safety reasons and also because I don't want the little kids anywhere near when I'm doing this. You never leave lye unattended. When you watch these soap making videos, you will learn more about how to safely process lye and use lye. 
Anyways, you want to make sure no pets and no children are around when you're doing this. And it's a good idea to wear a face mask. Definitely a good idea to wear gloves like you see me doing here. In this scene, I'm carefully adding the lye to the liquid. You don't want to do it the other way around. Apparently, it can be kind of explosive if you do that. <laughs> and I've, I've never done it, so I don't know. But you want to add your lye to the liquid slowly and stir. And you want to stir it until it is completely dissolved. If you don't, it can leave like a crystallized lye mass in your pan. And that can be very hard to get to disintegrate. So you want to stir it until it is completely dissolved. When the lye and the water are mixed together, there's a chemical reaction that takes place that makes the liquid very hot. That's why you see me doing this outside in a snow pile. I like to do it in the snow pile so it cools off more quickly. I've got a candy thermometer to test for when the lye liquid water gets to be the right temperature. I want it to be about 100 degrees. As you can see, I've got some white vinegar on hand. The vinegar helps neutralize in case any of the lye spills. It will help neutralize it so that it doesn't cause burns. I've got my fat here. It's ready to go. I've got my lye and calendula liquid. Before I mix them together, I'm going to add some essential oils to the fat. At brambleberry.com, they also have a fragrance calculator in addition to the lye calculator. And I used that to calculate how much essential oil to add because it tells you exactly how much if you just put the proportions in for how much you're making. I'm going to use my immersion blender with this. I don't know how you would do this if you didn't have an immersion blender. I guess I wouldn't recommend making soap without an immersion blender. Last year I did it in my kitchen aid and it took forever. <laughs> this immersion blender made it go a lot faster. All right, so you just saw me add the lye and now we're going to start the immersion process. The instructions are to go through a process of immersion blending for about 20 seconds and then letting it rest for a few and then immersion blending again. So we repeat this immersion blending process until the soap starts to do what is called trailing. And trailing is when you lift your immersion blender up out of the soap and you can see it's leaving a trail that is not disappearing quickly. Apparently you can over blend. So you only want to blend it until you see it starting to trail and leave that pattern after you've taken the blender out. After this round of soap making, I decided to go ahead and invest in some real soap molds because <laughs> as you can tell, this didn't work out so well. And also I need a larger quantity of molds. I went ahead and put it in this container, but it was so hard to get out <laughs> of. I've discovered that I absolutely love making soap. I think it's such a great way to use up grease that is otherwise kind of a nuisance to get rid of. I like that I'm in control of the ingredients and can assure that there is nothing going into the soap that I don't want in it for health purposes. There's only one thing about making soap that I don't like, and it's of course using the lye. I would have gotten into soap making a lot sooner had I not had small children. So having small children is what kept me from attempting to make soap sooner. Some people will probably think I'm just being paranoid, but lye can be very dangerous. And so 
I wanted to wait to even bring light into the house until I knew my kids were old enough to understand how important it was to steer clear of the light. Now, last year, my high schoolers actually had soap making as part of one of their home ag extracurricular activities last year, and that's kind of how we got into this. All of my kids are older and they understand the importance of safety when it comes to light and the younger children understand that they need to stay far away from the kitchen when we are working with making soap. If I had little children though, I probably would not attempt doing this. In fact, I didn't attempt doing this when I had small children. If you want to get into soap making, definitely watch the lie safety videos that I have included below and others. I would do a lot of research before you attempt making soap with lie. I will show you the finished soap at the end of this video, but I wanted to show you these super cute soap molds I found. They're little honeycomb and bees. I just think these are so cute. They're the neatest soap molds I've ever seen. I've shopped for soap molds before, but I didn't really care for any of them that I saw until I saw these. <laughs> we are back to homeschool after Christmas break. It's been a little challenging. It's been hard for the kids to get back into the routine, which is to be expected, but we're getting there. I don't know why, but this year was a little bit harder than normal to get back into the swing of things. Around 10 o'clock, the kids have a healthy little snack and we've got homegrown fermented pickles here. Almonds, probiotics, and and of course, a cookie. I found these little toy crafts at a dollar store. Kids had so much fun doing those. Here are some of the lotions and the salves that I made. They're all finished. Aren't they just gorgeous? And this is a bar of soap from last year. Hey, I did something a little different this year. I made some lip salve or lip balm and it turned out just absolutely luxuriously. I basically did the same thing as for the salve, only I added a little bit extra beeswax to firm it up. I made extra for gifts for friends and I can't wait to give them to my friends. You guys have requested a video on sourdough. So I am working on it, but it is a difficult video to create. So I just want to thank everybody that's been waiting on that sourdough video. I am working on it. It is in the process. It's coming. And in the meantime, I'm also developing a couple more recipes to show you guys I've been experimenting with less flour and higher hydration in the bread. But in the meantime, if you do want my sandwich bread recipe, I will link to it in a video below. In the bread that I'm cutting right now, it's a super simple recipe. It's a cup of sourdough, a cup of water, two teaspoons of salt, two tablespoons of shortening or oil, about an eighth of a cup of sugar. And for a sandwich loaf, I would do four cups of flour, but for a lighter dinner loaf, I would do three cups of flour. Three cups of flour makes it more difficult to work with, but it is nice and light and much airier. If you're brand new to bread making, I do have a tip for you. If you learn how to bake regular yeast bread, it's a lot easier when you transfer over and learn how to make sourdough. Yeast bread is more foolproof, and if you can figure out how to make it, you will be at that much more of an advantage when you go to make sourdough. The kids and I have been working to take the Christmas trees down and the decorations down. And I know that a lot of people leave them up through into February, but I just don't like the clutter. I like to get things back to normal. And I'm always a little anxious to get things put back away. I love bringing them out. I love when they're out, but then I love putting them away <laughs> as well, getting my spaces back. I was kind of racking my brain on how to store the Christmas ornaments this year when I came across one of these. It's a Christmas ornament holder and it holds like 60 ornaments. The only thing is it holds only little ones. I need to get one that holds large and unordinary sized ornaments as well now. The ornament box comes unassembled, so you have to assemble it yourself. It is kind of flimsy. It's cardboard, so it could break down easily if one is not careful or <laughs> if they have children that are not careful. <laughs> 
I have seen them for as low as $9. This one cost a little bit more. I found that the $9 ones weren't going to come until close to February, and I didn't want to wait that long to get everything put away. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of these Fox Run brushes and they just went on sale. I snagged two. I got one for the first six months of this year and then one for the second half. I find that they don't last a terribly long time, but they are 100% biodegradable. And when I'm doing dishes and cleaning in the kitchen, you guys, this is probably the most used, most favorite tool I have ever used in the kitchen. I use them for washing dishes. I use them for cleaning the sinks. So many things. I use it even to clean the top of the stove off because I find the bristles are perfect to get down into the little grooves of my stove. I'll link to them below for you in the description box. Where are my fellow homeschoolers? You guys, I got to show you this. I bought this over a year ago, maybe two years ago now, and it has saved me so much hassle. I highly recommend one of these if you are binding very many of your own books that you print yourself for your homeschool. This thing is so handy. It's just a book binder. I will link to mine below. I kind of wanted one that did the coil binding, but they were a lot more expensive and this was far more affordable and it has worked out spectacularly. You guys, it works so much better than using a traditional like three ring binder. The three ring binder pages end up getting ripped and fall out of those so easily. And with this, it stays together. It seems to last through the entire school year. By the end of the school year, it might be getting a little bit rickety only because some of the pages start getting a little bit loose. But another advantage to these is that you can just keep reusing the plastic binding. Highly, highly recommend these if you're printing a lot of your own materials. We're going into our next quarter in our homeschool and for the next two quarters we have some gather round material we're going to go through and this is my first time really using gather round i bought one of or i didn't buy but i got the entrepreneurship trial um, last fall and we went through it a couple months ago and it was only a one day sample and i liked it but i didn't get a very great idea of what it was like through that i didn't feel like so I went ahead though and I got the careers and trades because my high schoolers need to go through careers and trades as part of their high school. So I got this course and I've been going through it, you guys. I just am really impressed. I was reading through introductory sections and I read through the first page, the introduction, and my mind is like, oh my word, this gal that made this she's really got it going on i am so excited to get started with this it's very the the int introduction here was very touching so the way it works is there are units and each unit is designed for you to homeschool all of your children no matter the grade at the same time if you you know buy the family package this is the teacher's guide right here and then what you do is you have, I don't know what these are called, these are like the notebooks, I guess. And so we have ones for high school, and then it goes all the way down to pre-readers. So that pre-reader is for three to five years old. Early reader is six to eight. Early elementary is eight to 10. Upper elementary is 10 to 12. Middle school is 12 to 15, it says. And then high school is 16 to 18. It says they use Charlotte Mason elements. So that is kind of neat. I really like that it combines subjects. So although this is a careers and trades unit, throughout this unit, they're not just covering careers and trades. The kids are also working on language arts and I believe a variety of other subjects. Like I saw some math in here. Okay, it says right here, a single page can cross over into two to three subjects from science, geography, history, social studies, spelling and writing, Bible, art, grammar, and more. So they're not just learning careers and traits, they're learning all those other subjects at the same time. Wow, this is unlike any curriculum that I've seen before. I'm, I'm really excited for us to get started on this. So it's January. January and February are major burnout months. 
and I'm learning that it's a nice time to introduce something new and spicy into the homeschool. And so that's kind of what I'm doing here. I planned it out to where we would be doing our regular thing up to and through December, but then in January, when I knew we were gonna be starting to get tired of the same old thing that we've been doing to add something to kind of mix things up and bring in some variety and get us excited about learning through the rest of the homeschool year. Another thing that we're doing to bring some fun into not only the winter but our homeschool is we're doing some more handicrafts starting this month. I meant to start incorporating handicrafts sooner, but we just didn't make it to the crafts that I had planned, and it ended up being a good thing, too. Up till this month, we had the most lovely, mild winter, and the kids were still getting some outside playtime, but starting about a week into January, the temperature started dropping, and it's not safe to go outside and play for any length of time because we've had some zero degree temperatures and below zero degree temperatures. So it is a perfect time to tackle the indoor handicraft projects. I've had this quilt through the woods. It's called a layer cake. I bought this almost exactly two years ago and for all of this time, we have been meaning to get to it but just haven't. So I pulled it out a couple days ago. It was supposed to be a project for all of the older kids to work on, but my daughter, she kind of commandeered the project <laughs> and she was having so much fun with it that she did the whole thing in a day and a half. It is okay though, because I bought two. I actually bought kind of two and a half because I got two of these through the wood layer cakes but I also bought a small baby blanket kit as well so this isn't the only sewing project that we have planned I absolutely love the prints in this little layer cake kit In these next scenes, I'm going to be making some beeswax wraps. These are basically a more natural plastic wrap replacement. For mine, I like to use these little beeswax pellets that I got off of Amazon, and I like to use a little bit of mineral oil because that helps them to stay a little bit more flexible. To make these, I simply layer the mineral oil and the pellets, and then I layer them with the fabric. I'm going to use some of those layer cake pieces, and I bake them for about three to five minutes at 200 degrees. You gotta watch that they don't burn. While I do this, I thought I would share some verses that I have been finding super encouraging from the Bible lately. The first one is Hebrews 12, 11. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. I really like this because I'm definitely going through a growth and a pruning season right now. And I just find it so comforting to think that it's all in God's hands. He has got us. He's working with us. And it's actually a comfort when I remember that he must love us a lot because if he didn't, he wouldn't be working on us. Another verse that I have found wonderfully promising and encouraging is Isaiah 43, 19. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Sometimes we face a situation and it just seems like a hopeless situation. Maybe it's somebody we're praying for. Maybe it's something we're praying for in our own lives and we've been waiting for a really long time and all just seems lost. With God though, there really are no hopeless situations. In Joel 2, 25, we're promised that God will restore to us the years that the locust hath eaten. That's a pretty big promise and I believe that we can hold God to his word. It cools really quickly in zero degree weather. <laughs>
I met a wild companion I got a new kingdom I found gold in the ashtray I'm There you go, it's so pretty I got a new kingdom I saw the flashes in the dark Colors on the wall Bright against the monochrome Where I felt so small I drew the curtains up Pulled away the blinds Heard a rushing I began to glow with the love divine. Shine, 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 shine in the naked light of at the night. Shine, 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 shine. 